Greetings and welcome to Distillery. In the previous class, we discussed about steam. And we discussed about the properties of steam. We discussed about quality or dryness fraction. And then we discussed about evaluation of steam parameters, mixed steam, especially when we have vapor and liquid both present in the steam. So we started how to evaluate those parameters in case of steam. All right. <clears throat> Now we move on to this problem. This problem came in Gates 2003. So go ahead, pause the video and try to solve this problem yourself. So now let's see how to solve this particular problem. In Joule's experiments, an insulated container contains 20 kg of water initially at 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, it is stirred by an agitator, which is made to turn slowly uh, which is made to turn by a slowly falling body weighing 40 kg through a height of 4 meter. All right. The process is repeated, uh, repeated 500 times. The acceleration due to gravity is this. All right. So now, basically what is happening? We have our system. Our system is water. All right. Our system is water which is maintained at 25 degrees Celsius and there is 20 kg of it. All right, there is 20 kg of it. Now this water, it is actually stirred by an agitator, All right? This water, it is stirred by an agitator, all right? So naturally, this stirring of this agitator, it will give some energy to this water, All right? This would give energy into this water. All right, now this energy would actually be either dH or du. All right, now remember this, they have not given anything about a constant volume, right? They have not mentioned anywhere that the process is taking place at constant volume, right? So we are going to assume it has a constant pressure process, all right? We are going to assume it has a constant pressure process. They have only measured that there is an insulated container. They have not mentioned that it is rigid, right? If it is a rigid container, then definitely it's a constant volume process. But over here, they have not given anything like that. So we are going to assume that this energy, this energy is added at constant pressure. All right. This energy is added at constant pressure. So this energy that will be added, this energy is going to be, energy added is going to be stored. All right. And it is going to be stored in the form of enthalpy because it is added at constant pressure. If it would have been added at constant volume, then it would have been stored as internal energy. All right. So this concept is very important and this is actually going to be used a lot further. That if it has added at constant pressure, it is stored as enthalpy. If it has added as constant volume, then it is stored as internal energy. So keep that in mind. Okay. So energy added, it is basically stored as dH. Okay. Now we basically have to calculate how much energy has been added. So the energy that has been added to this is by this agitator. And this agitator is made to turn by the energy given by a 40 kg body falling from a height of 4 meter, right? A 40 kg body falling from a height of 4 meter. So basically, this energy that is supplied to the agitator, this energy is actually the potential energy that was held by this body, right? So potential energy by uh, that was held by this body is equal to mass of the body into 9.8 into h. All right, unit mass is kg, uh, 9.8 is meter per second square. So this becomes Newton into meter, which is height. So this becomes Newton meter. And the value is 1568. All right, the value is 1568. Joule. Okay, Newton meter is Joule. 
which is actually 1.568 kilojoule. All right. Now, this process is repeated 500 times. Therefore, total energy added is equal to 500 into the energy added once. Right. 500 into energy added once. So that is equal to 784 kilojoule. Okay, 784 kilos. This is the total energy added. Okay, now uh, this is a very important thing. Whenever they give water, so they generally don't give you the value of CP. Okay, so you have to remember that CP for water is 4.18 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Okay, remember that 4.18 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. So now this energy that has been added is actually stored as enthalpy. So you get M water CP water delta T is equal to 784, right? Now M water is 20 kg. CP water is 4.18 into delta T is equal to 784, okay? So from here, when you solve, you get delta T is equal to 9.38 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now, this delta T is actually the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Right. Final temperature, uh, sorry, initial temperature is given to be 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. So the final temperature is going to be 25 plus 9.38, that is 34.38 degrees Celsius. So, B part is your answer. All right. Hope you could solve this problem. Now, we come to a very important concept, that is energy balance. Now, if you remember in chemical process calculations, we discussed completely about material balance. So material balance involving chemical reactions, material balance without chemical reactions, material balance with recycle and bypass and purging operations. So all that we discussed in quite detail in throughout the course, <clears throat> right? Now, there was one small topic of chemical process calculations itself, which involved energy balance. But again, energy is totally introduced in thermodynamics. So I have introduced energy balance in thermodynamics. All right. So we'll deal with energy balance for this video. All right. <clears throat> so just like mass balance equations, mass in minus mass out plus mass generated minus mass consumed is equal to mass stored. Right. So now, similarly, you have energy balance equations. That is energy in minus energy out plus energy generated minus energy consumed is equal to energy stored. Same equation, just like mass balance. So at steady state, since there is no accumulation, so this becomes zero. Therefore, you have energy in minus energy out plus generation minus consumption is equal to zero. All right. So now over here, this energy generated and consumed term, it might be possible that it, uh, generation and consumption of energy does take place with chemical reactions. When chemical reactions are taking place, then definitely some of the energy would be consumed. Some might get generated. All right. So if energy is consumed by a reaction, then that reaction is known as endothermic reaction. Energy consuming reaction is an endothermic reaction. Energy producing reaction is an exothermic reaction. All right. So uh, energy is generated or consumed generally in chemical reactions. But apart from that, it can also be generated or consumed using some other mechanisms. All right. So we will not simply say that energy is generated and consumed only in chemical reactions. All right. So in case there is no generation or consumption, then we have steady state equation, which is energy in is equal to energy out. All right. This is the equation that we are going to follow for most of the cases. All right. So make sure that you're clear with these energy balance equations. It goes similar as it goes with mass balance, same it goes with energy balance. So now when we are talking about energy balance, then 
apart from uh, mass balance equations, you can also find a form, form an energy balance equation for a particular problem. All right. So in that way, just like in mass balance, we used to have a particular system, a particular unit. We used to have different streams coming in and going out. So over there, we used to form the number of equations depending on the number of variables. So let's say if you don't have sufficient information for mass balance, then you can also form an energy balance equation and solve that problem. All right, find those variables using energy balance. So material and energy balance, they can be used in combination as well. All right, in combination with each other. So we'll move on to our example number one. A liquid mixture containing 50 mole percent each of benzene and toluene at 313 Kelvin is to be continuously flash vaporized so that the distillate contains 60 mole percent benzene. The residual liquid product contains 35 mole percent benzene. So let's draw block diagram. So this is my flash column. Over here, I'll have my feed which contains benzene as 50%. Over here, I'll have my distillate, which contains benzene as 60%. And over here, I have my residual liquid, which has benzene as 35%. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the residual, okay. If the enthalpies per mole of feed, distillate and the residue, are respectively 5, 30, and 2. Now see, we have given you HF, HD, and HW as well. All right. HF, they have given to be 5 kilojoule per mole. HW, they have given to be 2 kilojoule per mole. And I think it is th uh, 30 kilo. This rate is 30 kilojoule per mole. So with this, and they have asked, calculate the heat added in kilojoule per mole of vapor product. So over here, they are saying that a heat, some heat is added. So we have to calculate the heat that is added per uh, mole of vapor product. Vapor product is D. All right. So, okay, let's go on with the suitable basis. We can take any basis. I'm going to take 100 mole feed. All right. Why I have taken mole and why not kilo mole? Because over here they have given kilojoule per mole. Everything is per mole. So that is why it's better to calculate everything in terms of mole to avoid calculation, complicated calculations. All right. So now we'll make our material balance equation. 100 is equal to D plus W overall material balance. And 50, that is 0 0.5 into 100, is equal to 0 0.6D plus 0 0.35W. From where did I get these equations? How did I get these equations? All this we have done in detail in chemical process calculations. All right. So you'll get D equals to 60, kilo, uh, 60 moles from here. And you'll get W equals to 40 moles from here. Okay. So you have D equals to 60 and W equals to 40 moles. Okay. Now we'll move ahead and form the energy balance equation. So energy balance, there is no energy generated. There is no energy consumed. There is no energy stored. Therefore, energy input is equal to energy output. So what is the energy coming in? Energy coming in is energy coming in from feed plus the heat added. All right. So that is HF into F plus Q. All right. And the energy leaving is basically energy from distillate, energy, energy leaving from residue. So HD into D plus HW into W. So you have all the values. We'll get Q as HD into D, that is 16 to 30 plus HW into W, that is 2 into 40 minus HF into F, that is 5 into 100. All right. So Q you will get as 1380 joule, sorry, uh, kilojoule. 
everything is in kilojoules. So kilojoule. Uh, all right. This is Q. All right. This is the heat that is added. Okay. Everything. Now, even the units are balanced. This is mole, and this is in kilojoule per mole. So mole mole gets cancelled. So this is kilojoules. Okay. Now they have asked you to calculate the heat added per mole of vapor product. So heat added per mole of vapor product. Per mole of vapor product is basically equals to Q by D. All right. So D is sixty. So one three eight zero by sixty, which is equal to twenty three kilojoules. All right. So this is how you form energy balance equations. Heat in is equal to heat out. The reason why we have taken enthalpy as energy in and enthalpy as energy out is because it is a steady state flow process. All right, a steady state flow process. So if you remember in thermodynamics for flow processes, we uh, first law of thermodynamics for first flow processes. We described that only taking internal energy would not satisfy our energy balance because if the fluid is flowing, then the fluid element just behind the other fluid, uh, other other fluid element, it is going to push that particular fluid element to go inside. So it is going to add some extra energy to the fluid, right? So we have to take that into account as well. That is why we take enthalpy. All right. If they would have mentioned anything about velocity, uh, internal sorry velocity, then potential energy or something like that, if they would have mentioned anything about it, then we would have taken that as well. But there is negligible change in velocities or potential energies or anything like that, so we have we have not taken that into account. All right. Then we move on to the next example: hundred mole of a ten percent volume by volume. Volume by volume, as in this is mole percent. All right, aqueous solution is being fed into an evaporator, where it uh, where it is supplied eighty hundred eight hundred sixteen kilojoules of heat is supplied. All right, if latent heat of vaporization of water is forty point eight kilojoule per mole of water evaporated, and if there is no enthalpy change in the inlet and outlet stream. Find the solid concentration in the outlet stream. All right, so let's draw our block diagram. So this is the evaporator. Over here, I'm adding hundred moles of ten percent aqueous solution. So F is equal to hundred mole. Xf is given to be zero point one. Okay, then some of the water is getting evaporated. And let's say the remaining is P. Okay, let's say enthalpy HF. Uh, sorry, enthalpy F into HF is coming in, and over here enthalpy uh, P into HP is going up. But there is no enthalpy difference here, so they have said that F into HF is equal to P into HP. All right, so keep that in mind. Okay, no. Enthalpy difference from the, in the inlet and outlet stream. All right. Then they have said that latent heat of vaporization is forty point eight. All right, and they have supplied eight hundred sixteen kilojoules of heat as well. So heat supplied as eight hundred sixteen kilojoules, and this heat has been used since there is no enthalpy change as such. So all the heat. Has been used to in, uh, to evaporate this water. All right. So in order to change the phase of water, we use latent heat only. All right. So that is why Q is going to be equal to the latent heat of vaporization of water. That is forty point eight kilojoule per mole into E. That is moles of water. This is your energy balance equation. All right. This is your energy balance equation. Okay. So from here you get eight hundred sixteen is equal to forty point eight E, which gives you E, which gives you E equals to twenty kilojoule. All right. 
and then you form the material balance equation f is equal to not kilojoule 20 mole okay then you form the material balance equation f is equal to e plus p therefore from here you get p is equal to f minus e that is 100 minus 20 which is 80 mole all right once we get 80 moles, then we'll form a component balance equation. Let's assume XP is the mole percent of the component over here, of solves over here. So XP into P is equal to XF into F. F is given to be 100 and XF is 0 0.1. So XP into 80 is equal to 0 0.1 into 100, that is 10. So from here, XP comes out to be 0. 125. Okay, 0 0.125. So this is 0 0.125. XP is 0.125. Okay, that is the heat, uh, that, that is the concentration of solids in the product stream. Now we can move on to example number three. Two boilers, one with superheated and other without superheated, are de delivering equal quantities of steam into a common mean. The pressure in the boilers are and main is 20 bar. That is in both the boilers and the main it is 20 bar. The temperature of stream of steam from a boiler with a superheater is 350 degrees Celsius, and temperature of the steam in the main is 250 degrees Celsius. So let's see. Let us assume that this is the boiler with superheater and this is the boiler without superheater. Okay, without superheater. And this is your mean. All right. Pressure in both the boilers as well as in the main is 20 bar. Okay. So we have kept that in mind. Then the temperature of the steam coming from boiler with superheater is 350 degrees Celsius. So temperature here is 350 degrees Celsius and temperature over here is 250 degrees Celsius. <coughs> okay. And <coughs> both the boilers are supplying heat at equal amounts. So let's say we take basis, not heat, both are supplying equal quantities of steam. So let's take basis as um, 1 kg steam from both boilers because it's the same. So therefore, you get 1 kg. So mass balance give you, gives you 1 kg from here and 1 kg from here. That gives you 2 kg of steam over here. Okay. 2 kg of steam over here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Over here, 20 bar is the pressure. All right, 20 bar is the pressure. So at 20 bar, you have to see that saturation temperature, saturation temperature at 20 bar is 212.38 uh, degrees Celsius. Okay, 212.38 <clears throat> degrees Celsius. Enthalpy of saturated liquid at 20 bar is 908.47. This data we get from uh, steam tables. So 908.47 kilojoule per kg. And enthalpy of saturated vapor we get as, we we'll call it Hg. So that is 2798.3 kilojoule per kg. All right. So this is what we have about enthalpy. We'll take only enthalpy data because we are really not interested in anything else. Okay. Then we know the temperature here. It is 350 degrees Celsius. We know the temperature over here. That is 250 degrees Celsius. So both these steams are superheated in nature. In the boiler number one, as well as in the main, you have superheated steam, right? So the enthalpy from superheated steam tables in H1 and Hm is going to be, H1 is going to be from steam tables. You will get 3137.7 kilojoule per kg. And Hm, 
you are going to get as 2903.3 kilojoule per kg. Okay. Then let's call this 2. So you don't know about 2. All right. Because you don't know its temperature here. You don't know the uh, steam quality. Nothing. You don't know anything. So we are going to form our energy balance equation. Okay. So energy balance gives us uh, M1 H1 plus M2 H2 is equal to MM HM. Okay. So M1 is 1, M2 is 1. So we will get H1 3137.7 into 1 plus 1 into H2 is unknown is equal to MM is 2 into 2903.3. So from here, you get H2 is equal to 2 into 2903.3 minus 3137.7. So H2, you get as 2668.9 kilojoule per kg. Now, if you see, this H2 lies between HF and HG. All right, at saturated temperature. Therefore, the temperature here is going to be the saturation temperature only, which is 212.38 degrees Celsius. And this is the enthalpy. So now we are going to use the formula for quality. So H2 is equal to 1 minus X into HF plus X into HG. Okay. So from here, you get X is equal to H2 minus HF upon hg minus hf all right so h2 you know hf you know hg you know. so from here you will get the quality as 0 0.93 okay this quality you will get as 0 0.93 okay <clears throat> so this is about this problem all right energy balance within this problem all right so hope you're clear with how we did energy balance over here the only thing that was different in this question was that we had to calculate, we had to get the values for enthalpies using steam tables. All right. That's all what we had to do. All right. Now let's move on to this example. This is a very interesting example. All right. This is some uh, slightly complicated. All right. And this is not a direct application of energy balance. Like in the previous cases, we simply had input and output energy. Over here, that's not the case. So we'll just look at it once, all right? <clears throat> so a valve on a well-insulated steam pipe carrying a saturated steam at 1000 kilopascal is found leaking. The temperature of the steam escaping from the leak is measured to be 398 Kelvin. Determine the quality of steam flowing through the pipe. The following data are taken from the steam table. They have given enthalpy of sat uh, saturated vapor at this pressure. And they have also given enthalpy, uh, enthalpy of saturated liquid at this pressure. Along with uh, superheated steam at 398 Kelvin and 101.3 kilopascal. All right. So now over here, let's just understand the process. All right. So what is happening? We have a pipe. Okay. We have a pipe, a well-insulated pipe through which steam is flown, okay? Through which steam is flown. So we have a well-insulated pipe and through this pipe, we have steam flowing, all right? Now, over here, let's say there's a valve in this pipe and somewhere here, right? There's a valve in this pipe and the steam from this valve, it starts to leak. All right, the steam from this valve, it starts to leak. All right, now when that happens, in that case, the steam that is coming in from here, some of it will get leaked and the remaining, it will go here. All right, now in the process, energy would also be lost, right? Some of the energy would also be lost. And uh, when this energy is going to be lost, then in that case, the steam, which was saturated, the pressure is maintained constant over here, that is 1000 kilopascal. So the pressure is same, 1000 kilopascal. It's only that now some of the energy has been lost. Okay. So because of that, since 
some of the energy is being lost now therefore this entire thing is going to change all right the enthalpy of the entire thing is going to change it's not no, it's not going to change um, the state of the entire thing the state of the steam here the state of the steam here here everywhere it is going to change all right it is going to change because energy has been lost by the void so it is going to slowly slowly change its state and finally it will come to a steady state where everywhere the same state is going to be maintained all right everywhere the same same state is going to be maintained all right and over here the steam is leaking all right over here the steam will be leaking so now when steady state is achieved when steady state is achieved that is now finally the heat chain the you can say the state of the steam inside the pipe it has become constant all right it has become constant so in that case now we can perform our energy balance all right now we can perform our energy balance so we cannot starting uh, we cannot perform energy balance in the beginning itself we have to wait till it achieves the steady state and after that we have to go on so now since it has achieved the steady state that means the uh, the enthalpy of the steam here and the enthalpy of the steam here it is going to be the same right everywhere and now we are going to perform energy balance between this point where the steam is entering and this point where the steam is leaving all right where the steam is leaving so enthalpy entering is h1 over here and let's con consider this point as h2 so enthalpy leaving is h2 all right so that's the condition now steam leaves as superheated steam at 398 kelvin right it leaves at 398 kelvin and over here the pressure is maintained at 101.325 kilopascal right so in that case the enthalpy is going to be 2726 kilojoule per kg so this is the enthalpy of steam that is leaving so h2 is 2726 kilojoule per kg so h1 as well is going to be 2726 kilojoule per kg all right this we have got from energy balance all right we can also get this from first law of thermodynamics see there is no heat that is transferred there is no work that is done right there is no kinetic energy no potential energy so we can simply get dh is equal to 0 and dh is basically h1 minus h2 is equal to 0 which means h1 is equal to h2 so in both the ways you can actually solve this problem all right so once you've got h1 equals to uh, 2726 therefore h1 is at 1000 kilo pascal all right h1 is the enthalpy at 1000 kilo kilo pascal so when pressure is 1000 kilo pascal then the enthalpy of liquid is 763 saturated liquid is 763 kilo joule per kg and enthalpy of saturated vapor is 2778 kilo joule per kg so in that case since now the enthalpy here is between these two therefore there is going to be some quality in the steam so we are going to calculate the quality using the formula 1 minus x into hf plus x into hg so from here you will get x is equal to h1 minus hf upon hg minus hf so that is going to be 0.974 right this is the quality of steam so determine the quality of steam flowing through the pipe so this is your result okay so keep in mind over here we have done energy balance after it has achieved steady state all right after it has achieved steady state that is when the enthalpy became constant throughout when the enthalpy became constant throughout in that case we have done a uh, enthalpy balance energy balance all right now we'll move on to the final example 
a jacketed stir tank reactor with the provision for heat removal is used to mix sulfuric acid and water in a steady state flow process h2so4 liquid enters at a rate of 4 kg per hour at 25 degrees celsius and water enters at a rate of 6 kg per hour at 10 degrees celsius so the following data are available a uh, specific heat capacity of water of solution and everything all right if the mixed stream leaves at 40 degrees celsius what is the rate of heat removal okay so let's draw a block diagram for this problem so we have a jacketed reactor all right now in this we are adding water let's call it x and sulfuric acid let's call it y and over here we are getting a mixed stream let's call it m now water i'll write it over here x is water and y is sulfuric acid okay now water is coming in at a temperature of 10 degrees celsius sulfuric acid it is coming in at a temperature of 25 degrees celsius mixed stream it is leaving at a temperature of 40 degrees celsius now water is coming in at 6 kg per hour sulfuric acid is coming at in at 4 kg per hour so over here by overall material balance x plus y that is 10 kg per hour of the solution is leaving all right then they have given the specific heat for water 4.2 kilojoule per kg kelvin then a uh, cp for sulfuric acid is not given then cp for the mixed solution they have given to be 2.8 kilojoule per kg solution kelvin so 2.8 kilojoule per kg kelvin all right all this information they have given but apart from that they have also said that heat is being removed over here so let's say q removed okay q removed there is one more thing that they have given in the question the uh, reference states they have taken as 25 degrees celsius so whatever reference temperature we are going to take that is going to be 25 degrees celsius so at t uh, temperature equals to 25 degrees celsius this is my reference state all right this is my reference temperature so we always calculate enthalpy as a reference parameter we discussed this in thermodynamics for flow processes so enthalpy anywhere we are going to calculate it as h is equal to mcp delta t so that is actually mcp t minus pr so generally this reference temperature is taken as zero but fine over here they have given as 25 degrees celsius so we are going to take that okay now based on this reference temperature they have said that the heat of mixing for aqueous solution is minus 650 kJ per kg uh, h2so4 so heat of mixing they have given as minus 650 kJ per kg sulfuric acid okay now this actually means since heat of mixing is negative that means heat is released all right heat is released or this heat that is released during mixing process is actually the heat generated during mixing okay this is the heat generated during mixing so this heat generated during mixing is actually the heat generated is actually plus of 650 this minus sign it indicates that uh this minus sign indicates that when mixing the heat is actually moving uh, it is not it is coming out of the system all right it is coming out of the system so this heat is basically generated right this heat is basically generated this is coming out of the system but within the system all right it is not being lost it is being generated so heat of mixing heat of the reaction all these things they come in with a negative sign but they are actually heat generated so keep that in mind okay so heat generated is always positive all right heat generated is always positive so keep that thing in mind okay so when we do that then we have 
our basic energy balance equation that is input energy input minus energy output plus energy generated minus energy consumed is equal to zero since it is a steady state and there is no energy that is consumed as such so this we are going to take zero input energy is the energy coming in from here from stream x so that is x cpx delta t that is temperature 10 minus 24 25 being the reference temperature output energy is actually oh, sorry we have not added x to s plus y cpy Temperature of the H2S of fourth stream is 25, so 25 minus 25. So this will be zero. Then output energy that is going out is from here, from the mixed stream, as well as the heat that is removed. So from the mixed stream, it is M CPM, temperature is 40 minus 25. And removal is Q rem removed. Okay. And then he generated as 650 kilojoule per hour. Uh, oh, sorry, kilo, uh, kilojoule per kg H2SO4. Now this unit has to be balanced. Rest of them are kilojoule per hour. So we are going to multiply this thing by mass flow rate of H2SO4. So that is 4 kg H2SO4 per hour. All right. So this becomes 650 into 4. Okay. And this entire thing is equal to zero. So finally, we get Q removed is equal to X, that is uh, 6 into CPX, that is 4.2 into 10 minus 25 plus zero. This entire thing is going to be zero. Then minus M is 10, right? By overall material balance, M is 10. CPM is 2.8 into 40 minus 25 plus 650 into 4. So when you solve this, you are going to get heat removed as 1802 kilojoule per hour. All right. That is the heat removed. 1802 kilojoule per hour. So option number A is the correct option. Okay. A option is your correct, correct option. So hope you could understand the various ways in which energy balance can be conducted and hope you could solve each and every problem that was given during this lecture.